Hey guys, this is Mark. Welcome to Back Endless. This is the first video in a series of many dedicated to version 4 of Back Endless, a groundbreaking version. We've been working on it for quite some time and now we're ready to uh, unveil it and so you can see all the goodness that it contains. This video is going to be dedicated to Back Endless console, a core element of our product, which is the front end for one's back end and you use it to administer your back end. Uh, work with your data and uh, it really is designed to help you build your mobile app. If you are familiar with the, the previous version of Backendless or uh, Backendless 3, uh, you will recognize the console, the navigation within the console. We kept it pretty much the same. However, the look and feel of it and uh, there are many subtle details which work very differently now and they are, they, we have changed them to streamline the process and make it easier for you to work with uh, your backend. Uh, there are many different improvements and we will be producing videos talking about specific things that have changed and how to work with them uh, in, in version four. And this video is gonna be about uh, major changes uh, in Backendless console. Uh, so we're gonna start with download project templates. Getting started with Backendless now is as easy as ever. We introduced the Download Project Templates feature, which will let you download a fully pre-configured project for your development environment. For example, here, we're going to download and run the project template for JavaScript. As you can see, the downloaded project includes all the references to the library, and can be executed out of the box. The code included in the template shows a basic example of storing a JavaScript object in the Backhandless database. In the current release, the templates list contains projects for Android and JavaScript, but in the very near future, we'll be adding a ton more different templates, including ones for Objective-C, Swift, variety of different frameworks for JavaScript, support for .NET, and so on. It is also possible to add your own templates, and we will be publishing a separate video describing that functionality. The business logic screen has been completely redesigned. Just like before, you can manage, create, and edit your API services, event handlers, and timers. Creating an API service follows a very simple process. Here, I'm going to create a simple service, which is included with backhandlers. The service is created, and you can proceed to invoking individual methods which exist in that service. So here, I'm invoking the get instructions method. You can see both the request and get the request in different formats and you can see the response. As for event handlers, the process has changed somewhat. There is now a new mode called draft and draft contains the code which is in unpublished state. One of the biggest features that we added in Backhandless 4 is an ability to edit code right in the console. So right here I'm going to create an event handler that will handle creation of new data objects in all tables. The event handler is created and you can actually edit the code for that event handler right here from the console. The code edit here will inject a property called magic property for every single object that would be persisted in Backhandless. As you can see, the code is edited right in the console and can be deployed right there into production. Right now it is in the draft mode and this blue uh, color indicates that. As you can see, draft has the blue color code. And now it is going to be deployed to production. Once it is deployed, there's going to be this event handler with a green color code corresponding to production. And now anytime a new object is persisted in Backhandless, it will contain that property which is injected by this server side code. Let's demonstrate that. So 
the object has been saved and as you can see this magic property just automatically appears in this object and you can confirm this in the data browser as well. Here's this object Joe, age 22, and we have this magic property which is now added by business logic. To support the draft mode, there is also a new section called coding. And in here you will see all the code that is generated or written by you and you can uh, inspect and edit this code right there in the coding section. You can also create new uh, folders and uh, files right there. So let's create a folder called services. And in services, we will add a new file called greeting service. And this file will contain a service that we're going to deploy. For this, I will use the code that is part of our Git repository in the JS Code Runner. There is a service called greeting. So this is the code of the service. And this, the service is very simple. There is a method called getGreeting that takes the username and it just returns uh, a value uh, greeting that particular user. The service is interesting in a way because it has built-in configuration options that are dictated by the service. And these options provide a way to get uh, the greeting in a specific language. And the service is added using this specific API. So now the service is going to be deployed to production. And by switching to API services, we now see this greeting service right here and uh, can be invoked right there by adding a username, click invoke, and we see the response from the service. The configuration options can be edited right there as well. So when the service is selected, click on the gear icon and select one of these configuration options. And uh, keep in mind that these options are actually driven by the service metadata. So we click save, and now when we invoke the service again, you see that the greeting is in Spanish now. To point out some things, anytime you make these changes, you can actually download all the code that is in draft using this button to download the project, so you can continue editing the code on your own computer. Just like before, the code runner is still there. You can debug the code on your own machine if you are going to do some more complex tasks. But for simple services or uh, for any quick changes, you can use the coding section and edit the code right there in the browser. The code generation system has been completely redesigned. Just like in the previous version, you can find a code generator for a feature and download the code. One of our goals was to build a system that allows maximal extensibility. The Canvas console in version 4 perfectly accomplishes that. Anyone can easily modify built-in code generators or add new ones. The Canvas now includes all of the code generation scripts which you could use to create your own code generators. In the very near future, we will also provide an ability to publish your own code generators into our marketplace so you can share it with the community and start generating revenue from it. As I said earlier, there are many more features in the Canvas console, but these are the core ones. We will be publishing many more videos describing how various features work. I know you will love version 4 of Backendless. Currently, it is available in the form of Backendless Pro, which does not require a license key while the product is in beta. You can download the product right from the Backendless website and start exploring the new version. Thank you and happy coding.